Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, this is AZ Arena, home of the Brockton Boxers. And today, it's one of those matchups where you don't know too, too much about the other team. It's Pope John Paul II coming to town to face the Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside the not so newly named athletic director of the <laughs> Brockton <laughs> High School Boxers, Kevin Caro. The happy theme, New Year, uh, Matt. Happy New Year. Scanning down the boxers roster, it looks like the theme is family. There's a lot of uh, Massaros, mm -hmm. a lot of Sylvias, and those names have been big in Brockton hockey over I the last couple of years. we have a Crookshank on there as well. We got a Crookshank in there. And then, of course, the returning senior, Jalen Bridges, who is the anchor of Brockton's top line. I think that they've switched the lineup between the last game. I think that they've moved a couple people around after talking to Chris the other day. So I think he split up his first line. So he has a little more balance on the first two. So I think Peyton Sylvia is on the second line now. He came down from the first line. The Lions of Pope John Paul II wearing blue and gold with white trim. The boxers in their very oh. Vegas Golden Knight-esque looking gray jerseys, white trim around Ooh. the black numbers. Ooh. Dominic Ooh. Mazzaro makes a save, loose puck. Oh, some good action early on, but unfortunately in the wrong end. Do we know where St. John or Pope John is out of where their hometown is. We will is. get that information at some point. It's looking like somewhere down the Cape. A lot of uh, Dennis Sandwich, uh, Barnstable players on the roster. Yeah, this is the first time that we've ever played them. Dominic Massari, your starting goaltender for the Boxers, just a sophomore and having himself a season of course the younger brother of Franco Mazzaro the four-year starter for the Boxers just a couple of years ago he's played in four complete games 22 goals against that's 5.5 uh, goals against average 821 save percentage but in talking to head coach Chris Cunningham that fault doesn't really fall on the young sophomore it's more on the defense played in front of him Brockton's had a very tough time of clearing the puck out of the zone. Yeah, and I think that's what happened against Norwell. I, I want to say that he faced 20 shots just in the first period and kept them all out of the net. And um, like you said, they're having a real tough time just clearing out that zone and putting some pressure on the other end. I think Chris said the other day that, uh, you know, he had, they have to take the action to the other team instead of letting them come and, and dictate the pace of play. So we'll see what it, uh, what it looks like today. He's faced 123 shots in four games, yeah. saving 101 of those. It's averaging out to, let's see, about 30 shots a game. Mm -hmm. So the other goalies on the Brockton roster have a little bit of experience from last year, Nathan Petty, Ryan Spano. Spano, the only one who has played this year, he's played one period. Oh, good feed. Now the puck in the boxer's offensive zone. Squirts out to the neutral zone. It's carried in now by Peyton Sylvia, the senior. The Lions take over. It is number 16 launching a shot saved by Massaro. That was Ben Baxter. Cleared out by Cade O'Connell. One of the rare times we've seen on the Brockton roster, a healthy mix of upperclassmen and lowerclassmen. Yeah. A lot of freshmen and, so and sophomores on the team, but mm -hmm. also a lot of juniors and seniors. Oh, they lost a core group of kids last year. I mean, they really did with Frank and Justin and and to Sylvia. Two top scores and Brockton scores open right. in the slot was number 18 Ben Martin. 
And he went glove hand top shelf. And Brockton is up a short three and a half minutes into this game. Henry Klim, the senior goalie for the Lions. He stood no shot on Martin's fiery wrister. Now this is what has been the downfall is you know, they work so hard to get that goal and just seems they have a little bit of a mental lapse and let the other team get right back in it. So they have to keep the pressure on here. The message of this particular game from Coach Chris Cunningham, block shots. Good move and oh. going to the end boards was Bridges. Well, that was a great scoring opportunity there. The goalie made a nice stop, held his ground. Here's Bridges in with speed. His shot ramps up, loose puck. And it's sent all the way down. Good stick save there by Don Mazzaro. Oh, they've got a change of the ice here. They can take advantage. Left open and a oh. shot and a blocker save by Klim. And for a minute, there were only three Brockton players on the ice, and that was it. You still had all that room to run on the far side. There's number 13, Al Birmingham, the junior defenseman fighting for it in front of the Pope John Paul bench. Peter Sylvia clearing it back out into the neutral zone. And offsides. On the lines, 9.41 to go in the first period. Brockton up 1-0, courtesy of Ben Martin. The coach said, the way the defensive zone is set up in, in the boxer's scheme, you would have to get out of the way to not block shots. Mm -hmm. And he said that's what he thinks people are doing. I wouldn't be too keen on getting hit with a puck. <laughs> Just saying. You're also loaded up with all these pads. He said there's only a little, maybe about an inch and a half of space on your ankle. Yeah. That is vulnerable to actually getting hurt. It's not like these guys are firing off uh, Shea Weber or Zanin Ochara like shots. Oh. This Some one's sent pressure. all the way down as the boxers have Mounting zone time, icing against the Lions. 9.03 to go in the first period. Do we have television timeouts here? We do not. <laughs> no, it's so cold in here that any extra time no, I, spent I don't, in I don't this see a red, I don't see a red light over. Nobody coming out to sweep out the ice in between yeah. television timeouts. I, I had timeouts. the pleasure to go to UMass Lowell versus UMass Amherst at the Mullins Center out in Amherst last night. And... The philosophy of what Chris was telling me is really the same between the Riverhawks. UML leads the nation in block shots. They had 84 block shots in three games wow. at one point in the season. But there's also no television timeouts. So, I mean, the game started at 7. We were out of there by 8.45. Oh, how good is that? And because it was college break, we uh, didn't have to deal with all the uh, Mullins maniacs okay. as they're called out west. But you were saying they're number two in the nation in Amherst. hockey. Amherst, UMass Amherst, number two in the country behind St. Cloud State. Here's an opportunity for the Lions. Oh, a good blocker good save blocker by save. Dominic Mazzaro. Yeah, great save. Stayed with it. Out into the neutral zone. And Lions dump it back in, but had to tag up. Stick save by Klim, and he will hold now, for the faceoff. Who's the coach out there? Did they hire someone from another program to come Did, in? He's or? a third-year coach of Amherst. I'll have to get his name during the first intermission. But Lowell's coach is... Uh, 
think in his sixth or seventh year, his uh, his first year, the Riverhawks won the Hockey oh, East. You're right. Norm Bay's in, and there were lots of rumors he was gonna leave for Denver. Okay. Before this season, and he said, no, I don't know where these rumors are originating from. I'm very happy in Lowell, mm -hmm. and being part of the best division in college sports, the Hockey East. Yeah. Which has really gotten wild over the last few years. BC and BU, Northeastern have all dropped off a yep. little bit. Giving an opportunity to the Minutemen, who are now 13 and three. Now, do you have a chance to see the roster and see where a lot of these kids, are they local or are they coming from all over? Amherst starting goalie is from Michigan. Lowell starting goalie is from Finland. Mm. Okay. Lots of uh, lots of guys from Ontario on the yep. Minutemen roster, and Lowell does a lot of scouting overseas. I don't know. The trend is to, you know, a lot of these kids out of high school instead of going to college, they'll go and play junior hockey for a couple of years, get some more experience, and then they'll go and play at, the, at a high level, and. Um, it's just changed. It's changed quite a bit from when I was in high school. And because of the get, age rules of the NCAA and the NHL, the NBA especially, you get the one and dones. Mm -hmm. A lot of, uh, especially with basketball, the, the freshmen go to Duke and Kentucky. And well, I think that they're taking a look at um, doing away with that. I think they may, they may go back to, to, you have to go at least two years. But that's, that problem is starting to arise in college hockey as well. You got Jack Eichel and Noah Hannafin uh, from a couple of years ago. And BU's stud this year is, is going to do the same thing. He's going to join, uh, I believe, Colorado right after the season okay. ends. Well, an interesting stat that one of my friends down at Durfee, we were talking about just how so many kids transfer from school to school to school in high school, primarily. But he said there were over 700 um, Division I football players that transferred schools last year. Wow. For one reason or another, looking to get playing time, looking to go to a better program, but it just seems that that's the new trend. You know, if you're not happy, you're not getting the playing time you want, all right, we'll jump and go somewhere else. And then there's the reverse story. You go to the school and you have to keep up with the academics. Mm -hmm. And when you jump from a public school system to Severian or BC High or something like that, it's very tough to jump from algebra to calculus. Yep. Oh, it is. I mean, it's just a different. Oh, it's just a different culture, and for some kids, it's a it's a very tough transition. Some kids do really well. Um, but I love to see you know, kids go to school where they grew up with their friends, who they grew up playing with. Now, if you take a look at some of the elite programs around, like Braintree Girls Basketball, for example, Mansfield Boys Basketball, those kids have played together since the third and fourth grade. And they come up together, they stay in school together, and they're successful. 5.18 to go in the first period. Brockton hanging on to a one goal lead. 1-0 over the Pope John Paul II Lions. Brockton with all of the offensive zone pressure in the last five or so minutes. Here's a shot launched wide. Now it's Peyton Sylvia with it. Still the, the stud of the Brockton back line and one of the three anchors on the forwards. Here's a slap shot in. It didn't get all of it, but it's still through Klimov. 
And it ends up going all the way back, taken by number seven, Jack Richards of the Lions out in front and cleared out by Nathan L. Shammy, who was kind enough to find me after the Durfee football game down in Fall River and say, you've been saying my name wrong for three years. <laughs> yes, you were calling him Nathan L. Shammy. I'm here every game, you know, you walk by me on your way to the bench, you know, just pull me aside and say, hey. I think uh, Franco Massaro's grandfather, when he was a freshman, came up to me after a couple of games and said, my son is gonna, or my grandson's gonna play in the NHL and you're saying his name wrong. <laughs> it's Massaro, not Mazzaro, there's no Z. <laughs> Which of course helped me in the later years with Marissa and Dominic and Dante. Yep. Laid offsides waved up as the boxers clear the zone. The Lions have it, trying to start to get some offensive pressure, and Brockton takes it right back. It's number nine, Kyle Crookshank. Oh, good opportunity. Crookshank, of course, his brother, one of the co-captains last year, Justin Crookshank. I yeah, just saw him out in the lobby with his mom. He's up at UMass Lowell, of all places. Really enjoying up there. Is he playing at all? I think he's on the club team up there. Two and a half to go in the first period. 1-0 boxers. So you know I jumped full time uh, to Lowell Community Access, Lowell Telecommunications. Our office is about a five minute walk from the Songa Center. Oh, is it really? So where are you living now? I'm out in Framingham. Okay. So it's kind of splitting the distance, 35 minute drive up 495. Is Poppy's restaurant still out there? No, they shut, it, shut down. it down. They shut That's it down. That's what I thought. It became a Moe's Southwest Grill. Okay. favorite thing that I learned about UMass Amherst is when there's one minute to go in the period, the announcer goes on one minute to go, one minute in the period, and the entire crowd yells out, thank you, and he answers them. He says, you're welcome, or anytime, or my pleasure. Oh, Blocker oh. saved by Mazzaro. That one kind of handcuffed him yeah. a little bit. Birmingham has it. There's a buck and a half to go, and every time they went on and did that, I just started laughing. I was like, it's so weird that they, <laughs> they thank you and well, then he answers them. Oh, I would love to get that started in the in the garden. I'd, I would love to know why and how that started. Yeah. But could you imagine 18,000 fans yelling oh, out, would, thank you! <laughs> They also have an ice band, as they call it, the drum line and the brass section oh. of the marching oh, band. Oh, really? That's and they one are phenomenal. Oh, that's one thing that, ooh, ooh. Oh, good save. pat save oh, off, off the, the post. post on the rebound attempt. Now, and Mazzaro was able to swipe it away. This is where they can't get sloppy, and this is what they did a couple times oh. last year where gave up a couple last, last second goals in a period and just took the steam, steam out. 45 seconds to go now in the first period. Brockton has had some Ooh, moments where hit. they've looked vulnerable, but Massaro has been yeah. good in net so far. Here come the Lions, 30 seconds to go in the first. They dump it in. Peyton Sylvia chases it down. He's got some ice open. Aiden Sylvia turning on the Jets across the red line, now into the Lions zone, back oh. in to get out in front. And the Lions dump it around the boards. Good keep in there by Pete. Uh, that was number four, rather, Nathan Alshami. 
I did it again, didn't you I? You did. El Shami. Yeah, El Shami. Oh, some good stick work. Oh. Last second shot, right. no good. The buzzer sounds, the first period has come to an end. It is 1-0 boxers, the goal from Ben Martin, assisted by Jalen Bridges. That is the only marker. Dante, uh, Dominic Massar, excuse me, has had a phenomenal first period in net for the boxers, coming up with a few huge saves, and that's what the boxers are going to look to negate in the second period is the offensive opportunities as few as they have been for the Lions, but there have been a couple of yeah. scary moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, but Dominic's done a nice job in net and just kind of keeping the rebounds from bouncing out in front. and So, encouraging first period. 1-0 at the end of the first. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second period action right after this. Hi, I'm Hannah Hart, and I'm here to talk if you're willing to listen. So I lived my whole life without knowing that depression was a real thing. I thought depression was like kind of the same thing as being sad or bored or whatever. As I got older and my life got bigger and broader, I still kind of carried what felt like a lead jacket with me wherever I went. Like there was this inherent sense of sadness that no amount of talk therapy was seeming to sort through. Eventually I started going to a different therapist and she was like, well, it just sounds like, you know, you have depression. I was like, oh, so? Now what? I personally did a lot of research, I started reading about it, and I found a lot of like-minded people that were like, oh my god, you experienced the same thing? There's not just something wrong with me? And as I started to realize what was going on with me, I was able to express it better to the people around me. One of the most important things to remember if you're reaching out to someone you love who's keeping something inside is patience. And don't get frustrated. And if the conversation doesn't go well, don't feel like, oh man, I did this. Set your intention before you even pick up the phone. And for me, it's no matter how this goes, it's not about me. I'm trying because I feel compelled to try and I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna listen. A good rule of thumb, listen twice as much as you speak. If somebody wants advice, they're gonna go, I don't know, what do you think I should do? And that's when you tell them. I feel like we have a tendency to wanna fix problems and solve and give people advice. If you just did this, this, and this, you'd feel better, okay? Great, thanks, it's resolved, chick, chick. And I do this too. But that's only because we don't want to see the person we love suffering. But unfortunately, sometimes we have to let them suffer in that moment so they can let their suffering out. If somebody's starting to cry and it makes you feel really awkward and really uncomfortable, just sit with it, man, because odds are they need to cry. Your friends want to help you. Your friends want to be there for you. They just don't know how. For instance, my partner is like, why can't I make you happy? And I'm like, this is my happy. So it's okay to take some time and research what might be the right thing for you. When I'm really stressed out or I'm really feeling not my best, I just need someone to be like, yeah? And then I could be like, yeah, word vomit, word vomit, word vomit, word vomit, and then I'll feel better. It's not about telling every single person in your life, hey guys, I'm depressed today. It's about finding the support in your life so you know who to tell. That way, they can be there for you, and you're not just alone in the feeling anymore. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Alpha Arena for second period action between the uh, Pope John Paul II Lions and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Kevin Carroll, the athletic director here at Brockton High School. It is one to nothing. Boxers on top, courtesy of Ben Martin, assisted by Jalen Bridges, three and a half minutes into the game. And Dominic Mazzaro makes another good save there. Going back to uh, one of the conversations, many conversations we had in the first period, the head coach of the UMass Minutemen, yes. Greg Carvel, who came from St. Lawrence. Okay. And before that, he was an assistant with the Ottawa Senators and the good old days of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Oh, we got some action. In front of the net, loose puck still around. Oh, man, Brockton unable to fire off a oh. Not in it. Oh. Bounces off of the helmet, <laughs> off of the post, the top of the net, and eventually out. Oh, what an opportunity there. They had about four or five shots from point blank range and just couldn't put it past the goalie. The most interesting thing on Carvel's uh, resume, from
from 1997 to 99, he was the director of hockey operations for the Lowell Rock Monsters of the AHL, okay. playing at the Songus Center on the campus of the University of Massachusetts Lowell. So he just came back home, really. Well, pretty close. Same pretty state. Close. Same state. Same. Uh, same boss, if you think about it. Yeah. Norm Bazin of the Riverhawks came from Colorado. But he played at UMass Lowell. So he's come home. Oh. One of the more underrated upsets happened oh. last night. And here's number five in the high slot. Blocker saved by Klim. That was Peter Sylvia launching that shot for the boxers. Now it is Jake Jaguer, the senior. Oh, Jake just got the business in the corner from a big defenseman. <laughs> Number 17, who would be Sean Roycroft. Oh, gave Jake the business. One, one letter off from mm -hmm. uh, former Bruins goalie. And one, one half of the trade that led to the Bruins getting Tuka Rask. Oh, that's right. Andrew Raycroft, Raycroft, R-A-Y. Was traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for a first round draft pick that eventually became Tuka Rask. I have to say, I like I like their, their other goaltender for the Bruins. Yaroslav Halak, here's an yeah. opportunity for the Lions. I really do. I mean, I saw him on Thursday night, and he made 40 stops. I mean, some really point-blank breakaways. And I think that improved him to 13-5 and five on the year as the I backup. He, he finally found his niche. He had one great year in St. Louis with mm. Brian Elliott, but they were really two starters. They played, I think, 44 games and 38 games or something okay. like that each. Originally from the team from up north, the Montreal Canadiens okay. drafted him. And then he bounced around. He was with the New York Islanders for a few seasons and finally signing with the Bruins. Now, where did Anton, Anton Kadobin go? Is he still in Dallas? Hudobin, I believe, is in Calgary. Calgary. All right. The backup up there. All right. We've got some open. Let it go. Here's Peter oh. Sylvia shot blocked, blocked shot. by number 23, Jack Sherwood. The same name as the famous hockey stick company. Which I have six of them in my old athletic director's office. Old wooden ones, left-handed. I still need to get out here and skate one time before the end of the season. I've yet to do it. I have to get back to uh, Gillette to the outdoor rink they build there every oh, I year. I haven't seen it. It's right at the base of the Pro Shop yep. and CBS scene on the other okay. side. Now, I couldn't believe I was up in New Hampshire for New Year's Eve and all the ponds up there were frozen. I mean, people were skating on them. Oh, yeah. I mean, ice fishing. Excellent effort to try to keep that puck in by Al Birmingham, but now he's late getting back. No harm, no foul as the boxers dump it back in. It's number six, Ryan Flannery, yet another sophomore. It's amazing to me that the Bruins have been as competitive as they are when you lost Chara Bergeron McAvoy 
Yeah, next man up, and I mean, it's just a, I think they've bought into Bruce Cassidy's scheme and you know, just putting people in the system. And, and his, Cassidy's bread and butter has been developing players. There's a shot off the helmet of Klim. Of course, Bruce Cassidy, the head coach of the Providence Bruins for five years before mm -hmm. taking over for Claude Julian. I was very disappointed that the all-time winningest coach in Bruins history left and signed with the Montreal yeah. Canadiens. <laughs> that broke my heart. Oh, is he still there? I mean, he, he is. He is still there. I'll tell you, I went to a game up at the Bell Center the Saturday after Thanksgiving this year. And how was it? It sits 23,000 yeah. people. That barn is huge, and it's a party atmosphere. Well, Montreal's a great city. I mean, I've been up there a few times, Quebec City, which I'm really surprised they don't have a team Yet. back in the NHL. They will. But I think they will. And when, when I was up there, there were plans for them to build a new arena uh, in old Quebec. I think they're going ahead with plans to build a new arena. Here's a stick saved by Cliff. Oh, oh. It. It's still loose and dumping it, but not out. Excellent keep in there by Birmingham. He dumps it back around the boards onto the red warning track. Well, the party atmosphere, and as much as I hate to say a stereotype is true, the stereotypes are true. Every Canadian I talked to was very, very polite. Pope John Paul scores as Mazzaro got tied up sliding across the crease. I believe that was number six, Antonio Puccillo. I'll get the official word from the. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Booth. I mean, the boxers have had a number of chances this period. Down all at the this momentum. End. I mean, they've had all the momentum and a little breakdown in the defense there and a, a lucky rebound, and it, we're all tied up. Sam Delman credited with the goal, assisted by Ben Baxter. So we're all knotted up, 8.15 to go in the second period. Oh, it's good feed. Couldn't, come on, put it on net. The one guy who tried to give me trouble after the Bruins won four to one, said, yeah, well, we've won 24 Stanley Cups. To which I answered, are we really going to count the 10 you won before the <laughs> NHL was even invented? He said, yeah, you know, you're right. <laughs> Guy gives me a hug. I run into him later at the bar, and he buys me a freaking bear. Hey. Unbelievable. <laughs> but we got to talk about food. Canadian breakfast. Traditional Canadian breakfast. Ham, sausage, bacon. A pile of home fries, three eggs, and a crepe. How does it get any better than that? I, I couldn't finish it all. I got the uh, the crepe had strawberries and Nutella in it, and then a, a whole pile of fruit. Wow. Oh, my God. Speaking of food, we went to the Bruins game Thursday. You didn't go to Durgan Park. No. No, I haven't been to Durgan Park in about 20 years. They're closing down at the yeah, uh, I think, end of January. I, and I just think what happened is it, 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 it's very traditional. They really haven't changed the menu at all. They've been um, open 192 years. Everyone's saying it's because of the minimum wage increase. I say it's because people aren't going out to eat as much yeah, anymore. They're not going out to eat, and you have so many options, and it, they haven't been innovative with the menu, and I think people are eating healthier, and they want more options. And, and people can't afford to shell out $30 for a no. piece of prime rent. No. And sit at a picnic table. <laughs> yeah. We have a Pope John Paul II penalty. However, I don't think I see anyone in the box over there. 
Number 24 is headed off. But now we have number 24 and number six, two for one special. Matthew Makata. Oh no, now it's just what the? Antonio Puccillo. What is going on here? All I know is we have a power play. There's a penalty somewhere in there. Brockton's and I'm, not even, I'm not even sure what it was for. Delay of game. Delay of game, but did he shoot the puck after a whistle? I don't know. Good oh, keep oh in there boy. by Peyton Sylvia. That would have been a two on none. Yep. My favorite rule change that the MIAA has implemented is it's a two minute minor penalty as opposed to a minute and 30 seconds. Birmingham has it chopped off his stick. A lot of passing, they gotta shoot. El Shammy launches one. Uh, keep it in. He did. Sylvia backhanding it off of the blue line. Now it's uh, Bridges. Bridges can't come get on, clean Jaylen. control of it. Jalen Bridges dangling to the high slot for Peyton Sylvia. He runs out of room. El Shammy to the slot for Birmingham. It's loose. Oh man, another. Good opportunity. Martin chases it down now. Loose almost kicked in by El Shammy. 45 seconds left on the box. Brockton man advantage. Peyton Sylvia to the end boards intentionally wide. Jalen Bridges with 6.20 left in the second period. All tied up at one. Oh. And missing it was Al Birmingham in the slot. And oh, there's going to be a tripping trip. penalty. Yeah. I don't know how much of a trip that was. More of losing an edge, and the stick happened to be in front of his legs. But it'll be a four on four for 29 seconds. That's Al Birmingham headed to the box for tripping. And after 29 seconds, Pope John Paul II will have about a minute and a half of power play time. A lot of room out there to skate. Oh, oh, put the Jets on. Are they going to rule hooking? Oh. And now an offsides is going to be called against the boxers. Instead, they tag up. Number 17 with it for the Lions. That's Sean Roycroft. Every time I look at that name on the roster, I want to say Raycroft. <laughs> Pacillo's out of the box. It's a man advantage now for about a minute and a half for the Lions. Klim rims it around the boards all the way to number eight, waiting in the neutral zone. That's DJ Mars, the junior forward. Brockton clearing it all the way back so down. Matt, let's 12. see how far back we could go as far as Bruins goalies. Okay, let's see. There was Tuka Rask. Mm -hmm. And before that was Tim Thomas. Yep. Before him was Tuka Rask again. You know, much better. I'm just. I'm gonna have to go old school. When you get to the 70s and 80s, before you were born. <laughs> that was before Cheevers was late. Cheevers 80s, right? and Eddie Johnston and Gilles Gilbert, and then Bernie Perrant was with the Bruins for a little while. Andy Moog. By the way, it's about time number 16 got retired. Yes, nifty. He plays here at AZ Arena every April in the Bruins alumni versus the Black and Blues team. And let's not forget Eastern native Jim Craig suited up for the Bruins for Jim a little Craig. bit. I just watched Miracle. Oh. Uh, Rewatched it. It's on Netflix. The story so of the good. 1980 Miracle on Ice team. I called my mom and I said, Mom, you know, I was watching this part of Miracle and, you know, she says, I've never seen the movie. She said she got about five minutes in and tears started welling up in her eyes because it was so emotional bringing her back to what that yeah. team did oh. for the country. Oh, it was amazing. And, and growing up, is yeah, I was, remember being in uh, middle school and we all played out on the pond and we all played street hockey and everybody wanted to be Jim Craig and Mike Arruzzioni and um, just everyone on that team. 
And that's when the whole USA, USA chant really started at sporting events. And yeah, it was a special time. And they did a great job capturing the, the spirit of the country in that movie. And they cast it perfectly. No, I, 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 I watched that at least once a year. I'll tell you, I would love to interview Al Michaels on his career because he's the one that called the miracle. Yep. You believe in miracles? And, he, yes. and I remember people talking to him about it. He goes, it just came to mind. It wasn't something that he said was scripted. It just happened. And then you look at the trajectory of his career between the Olympics and now Sunday Night Football on NBC. Yep. He's had a part in some huge games. And I was up in actually up in Lake Placid uh, a couple summers ago and went to the whole Olympic Village and did the um, bobsled run. But I know they still have a lot of tournaments up there for youth hockey. Shoot the puck. Shoot it. A block shot attempt from the high slot. Now it's Ryan Flannery with it. We're back to even strength. 3.15 left in the second period. Still knotted up at one goal apiece. Flannery for the boxers in the corner. He is taken down. Birmingham trying to sweep it away. The Lions unable to gain clean entry. Hey, I'm just watching the Oliver Ames team warm up over here behind the benches, and it would be so great if. Oh. There's a wow. goal, and Lazaro was completely fooled on the rocket from the blue line. That was about four inches off the ice. Curtis Weber, the junior defenseman from Barnstable, putting that one home. And the Lions have taken a two to one lead with two and a half to go in the second period. And Mazzaro was completely, free. he might have been accept, expecting a tip. Yeah. He was oh, on the other straight. side of the goal and straight in. Oh, just going back to what I said over here with the, the teams, there's no really place to warm up except in a hallway. And I would just love to see yeah, the DCR build a new facility that had some workout space, some room to stretch, put some turf down, just so everybody that utilized the facility had a, you know. A, this is the whole attic. arena. Oh, my God. Brockton, Stoughton, Oliver Ames. Uh, there's a, a number of peewee teams. But then you go to like the Mullen Center in Amherst or the Saga Center up in Lowell. Oh, just and the they've got oh, just the Canton room. Ice House, which is relatively new. The bog down in Kingston is just a, it's just updated. Oh, the Ice House in uh, Canton. Canton is oh, it's phenomenal. It's we had a so playoff good. game there a few years ago. Uh, might have even been uh, this, this past year uh, against uh, Framingham. Yep. Come on. Peyton Sylvia launches oh. one blocker saved by Klim. At the Ice House with two full rinks. Mm -hmm. Along with many other attributes. Now oh, they have a restaurant up there and there's a workout facility on the back side of it. I mean, there's just a lot of thought went into it when they built it. Yeah. Has to be one of the older rinks in the state. It's been here as long as I can remember. Yeah, it's been here for a long time. It was here when I was a kid, and I'm old. Buck 19 to go in the second. Brockton now playing from behind 2-1. to one. The score score the Pope John Paul, the second Lions on top courtesy of a goal by DJ Mars. Hayden Sylvia oh. tripped from oh, behind. He's down. We've got hooking. Number 21. Yeah. If this were the NHL, that would be a penalty shot. Yeah. yeah. Number 23 headed to the box. That's Jack Sherwood, the freshman defenseman. 
All right, let's see if we can knot it up before we go into the second, uh, the end of the second here. Sherwood out of Falmouth, of course, the hometown of Gil Santos. And home of the best pie shop in the country. And that would be? Eileen Blake. Okay. If you're ever in Falmouth, are we supposed to say thank and you? It is going to be a boarding penalty on the boxers. Well, that's just that is just not smart. You're on the power play. You've got for a minute 46 and trying to plead his case unsuccessfully is Peyton Sylvia. It was. Oh, I heard that. I heard that. Up, I felt that up here. Clear board. I'm surprised it's only a two minute minor. One of those hits you, as mm. you said, you hear, you feel that oh, the felt boards that around the rink shake. Four on four for uh, a uh -oh. minute 38, and after that, the Lions will have a 15 second power play. Well, Brockton setting up as if they're on a penalty kill. This one sticked away by Mazzaro. Brockton spending a lot of time this period in their defensive zone. Now finally charging is Jalen Bridges. He goes oh, between his legs and Birmingham tried to put the shot. Just couldn't find the going. handle. El Shami out in front. Bridges can't scoop it. And we're done after two, but they have a little bit of That was a very catching. quick period. That was super quick. This has been a really quick game. Two to one, your score. The Pope John Paul II Lions leading the Brockton Boxers courtesy of a goal by DJ Mars. That's the only marker in the second period. When we come back in the third, it'll be a 51 second four on four and then a 15 second power play for the Lions. Two to one the score after the second period. We're gonna step aside, take a short break, and bring you third period action right after this. Your friend wanted to surprise you really quickly. My friend? Yeah. My friend. Okay. Hey, Sharon. I'm here. It's me. What's up, Pelvis? It's me, Sarah Lee. I just wanted to tell you I love you. And you mean the world to me, honestly. I was bullied for four years in middle school. And these girls. <laughs> They would say the meanest things ever. I met you, and when I smiled, you said you had the greatest smile, and it meant so much to me. You know, I was a jerk a lot of times, and I didn't really treat or say things that were, you know, the best. It got to a point with my eating disorder. They were like, you have to make a decision whether to eat or you can't come back to school. You just sat there and you listened and you gave me advice. I've never had someone who um, who wanted to like hear what I've had to say. Because of you, I felt more comfortable and I felt welcome being at school, being the new kid, because no one else came up to me the way you did. I do know what you do for me. Like I do not ignore it. It's it's being recorded in my brain. It's it's in there. Because without you, I wouldn't be the person I am today.
such a big impact on her life. I knew that just by being nice to people, I could have an impact, but not that much. Like, I didn't know that those kinds of words would be so impactful on her. So when you have the opportunity to tell somebody how much they mean to you, you need to tell them so that they can keep doing it for other people. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Alpha Arena for third period action between the Brockton Boxers and the Pope John Paul the second Lions. It's two to one Lions on top, courtesy of a goal by DJ Mars. The first Pope John Paul goal scored by Ben Baxter. He's being attended to by trainer Jerry Connor at the moment. So we'll keep an eye on his situation. He's now walking back to the Lion bench. The Lions wearing their visiting blue jerseys with Gold lettering, white trim around that. Brockton in their new this year home jerseys as Dominic Massaro. The boxers had no idea what was going on. Five bo uh, four boxers in the crease. So we did start to spare it off with a 51 second four on four. That will expire in 15 seconds. At the end of that, the Lions will have a 15 second power play. Dominic Massaro has been very strong thus far today. But he was completely fooled on the last Lion goal. And now he comes all the way out, dives. He's running to by his own man. And down and hurt. That's Ben Martin that is very hurt after running into his goaltender, Dominic Massaro. Massaro looks no worse for the wear and makes a phenomenal flash the glove leather save on the heels of getting absolutely trucked by Ben Martin who is in some serious pain on the boxer bench. Ben Martin, the lone boxer goal scorer today. Right wing of the top line and, and Martin was down for a good minute as Brockton's Coach Chris Cunningham was yelling to ice it because we've got an injured player in a four on four situation. There's already a lot of room to skate. You don't want to give up any more than that. We are back to even strength. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, the athletic director of Brockton High School, Kevin Cairo, two minutes into the third period. Boxers have had the majority of opportunities in this game, but have had some severe me uh, mental defensive lapses that have led to both Lions goals. Martin still on the boxer bench on the back bench, which is not a good sign. Now a, an opportunity for the, and a goal for the Lions. It was put home by Joey Manning, assisted by Jack Richards. And Massaro didn't know where the rebound was. Little did he know it was in the high slot being attended to by Manning, the junior forward. Three to one Lions on top with 11.50 to go in the third period. 
Sean Roycroft assisting on that goal as well. So that's uh, Manning with the third goal of the afternoon for the Lions. Peyton Sylvia with it. And a Brockton goal, way to answer there. As Ben Martin's back on the ice, he assisted on that. On the first shift back from absolutely trucking Dominic Massaro on the other end of the ice and getting what looked like severely hurt to his ribs, Ben Martin. Assisting on the goal by Nathan L. Shammy. There we go. You really had to work at that, though. I, I, had, to, I had to look at it. <laughs> yeah, you really did. So it's three to two, and two goals scored in the first four minutes of this third period. Peyton Sylvia credited with that goal. Assisted by Nathan L. Shammy. Time of the goal. 11-18, that's 24 from four. So Brockton right back in it. Always a scary situation when you see your goalie get trucked by mm -hmm. your lone goal scorer on the afternoon and then one of them becomes hurt. Flim dives on the loose puck for the faceoff. I almost forgot how cold this rink is until I went outside to the lobby. I had to take a phone call, and I came back in. It is freezing in here. Oh, yeah. It never gets any warmer in here. Nope. If we had the... Uh, oh, the boxers again. tie it up, and what a celebration there for the boxers on the far side. All I know is Jalen Bridges did not get that goal because he was the last man into the pile. Ben Martin celebrating. He's the first to the boxers bench. Peyton Sylvia right behind him. All right. All of a sudden, we we're all tied up. <laughs> and just like that, we have a game. Rocking goal scored by number 18, Ben, ben Martin. Martin, his second of the day. Well, let's see if he can trick it up. El Shammy. So El Shammy's got two assists on the day. Ben Martin's got two goals. Shoot it. Peyton Sylvia's got the other boxer goal. 9.50 to go, Brockton has tilted the ice. After going down by two goals early in this third period. Yeah, and I was behind the net off. on that third goal that, um, is it St. Paul? <laughs> St. Pope John Paul? Pope John Paul Pope John the second, Paul. not the first. Oh my goodness not gracious. The See third, what happens when second. you get old. I can't even remember the name of the team we're playing. No, but it just well, took got a, a lot of popes since but John it, Paul. It, it just took a crazy bounce. It did. To it, a wide open off, net. Uh, Massaro's left pillow. Yeah. Right into the slot. That's an excellent defensive breakup. Oh. And now Brockton trying to get numbers up ice. Just a little bit ahead. Excellent stick work by Al Birmingham to break up the three on one. And the ref loses an edge. <laughs> the ref just he landed on his like he bottom and over slid the into blue the board. Line. Who put that piece of ice there? <laughs> <laughs> Guess the referee forgot our keys to the game. He obviously did not see the message board when he walked into the locker Didn't room. Didn't see the message board. Rule number, key number one, score more goals than the other team. Constant forward checking is key number two. And last but not least, the, probably the, the most, most important. Sharpen your skates. 
it's because, a, it's you know, it's a sheet of ice out it there. It really is. I want to take this uh, stoppage break of the action to thank our cameraman for today's festivities, the one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Rockin'. And Dunkin' Donuts, which was a and great, Donuts. great start to the afternoon, an afternoon large regular, courtesy of Mr. Matt Nelson. Much appreciated. But even a hot cup of coffee doesn't last very long in here before, oh, no. No. before I, it's an iced anytime coffee. Anytime I've come here, <laughs> I've learned to get iced or finish it before the end of the first period because oh. then it's a block of ice. That reminds me, last year when I was at the Super Bowl, we were in Minneapolis with friends walking around having a, a beverage. And within six minutes, the beverage was slush. It was that Ooh. cold. But the folks up in Minnesota will tell you it's a dry cold. It's bearable. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like around here where you get the... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, that's a goal for the Lions. Funky bounce out front. And the Lions have regained a lead 4-3. to three. And That goal scored by number three, Sam Delman, the sophomore forward from Sandwich. But I have come upon uh, quite the find. RTIC is the brand. Its uh, main competitor is Yeti. Oh, yes. The, uh, the tumblers they make. I made tea at 12.15 in the afternoon today, and it is still a little bit too hot to drink. Really? As of the second intermission. I know that I've yet to see a Yeti product ever on sale anywhere. Yeah, they, they go on sale and they're like $40 for a 20 ounce tumbler. <laughs> and it's like, who's going to bankroll that? But RTIC on Amazon, I think I got my 40 ounce tumbler for $24. Here's a three on one for the Lions. The shot blocked away by Peyton Sylvia. And it's a lovely shade of navy blue. And who makes it again? RTIC. RTIC. Came in very handy in the later stages of football season when it was, oh. what was it, a whole whopping 10 degrees on Thanksgiving? Oh, my God. I, feel, I still think I'm far enough from that game. Icing against the Lions, 6-13 to go. Brockton down by one. Funky Bounces has been the story of this game. Yeah, a couple of them now, the last two goals. Let's see if they can tie it up one more time. Oh, oh, that was... Forgot to sharpen his skates? Yeah. All the way down, icing waved off. Number 17 retrieving it. That's Sean Roycroft. Doesn't matter. Well, they're going to call icing and everybody yelling that Massaro touched it, but it rightfully behind, so, behind, behind the, the line. Behind so the, the icing line. had already occurred. Yeah. This is quite the hockey song. Started off with some violin. The music always gets more and more <laughs> diversified the more we come here. We've heard country western. Oh, which I'm a We've big heard fan of. ACDC. Little Ozzy. Ozzy. Oh, that was going Off top the shelf. post. That was and going up. top shelf. And some good old Metallica. Some Metallica. Maybe you want to hold off for a few more minutes before the Sandman enters. Give the uh, <laughs> give the boxes a chance to tie it up again. Tell you, last night at the basketball game, we had um, 
One of our phys ed teachers who DJs on the side, he set up his sound system. We had an announcer, great crowd. It kind of felt like it had like a pro feel to it. Brighton always one of the better matchups. I was shocked when um, their coach. Yeah, Hugh Coleman went Hugh to Coleman Charleston. Hugh Coleman left to Charleston. Mm -hmm. And I give Charlestown a year or two, and they'll be. Oh yeah. They'll be I right, mean, right where Brighton was. Hugh does Brighton a great job. Brighton won back-to-back D2 state titles, mm -hmm. and I think won uh, three in four <laughs> years. Here's an opportunity for the boxers losing it. I think that was Martin. Stick save Massaro to the end boards. Now he sticks it back behind his goal, cleared out. 4.15 left in the third period. Brockton trying to claw their way back from yet another deficit. At one point they were tied 3-3 after being down 3-1. gets even more colder in this rink. It just really, really hit me. And it's not cold outside. No, it's not. It could be 50 degrees outside <laughs> and still about five in this rink. But don't feel bad for us. Feel bad for Jerry Connor, who's <laughs> staying for the game after this. That's right, to see her son in To Ned see her son, who's the goalie for the Oliver Rams Tigers. and 20 seconds left in a back and forth affair here at Asia Farina between Pope John Paul II and the Brockton Boxers. This is an exclusionary game for the Lions and to explain to us exactly what that means, Mr. Kevin Cairo. <laughs> well, um, the, the game limit for uh, hockey and basketball is 20 games that each team gets to play up to. If you play up a division, like um, our opponents are today, they get to play up to two extra games. And there's a list of teams that the MIA has that are exclusion schools based on their size. So if a smaller school plays a bigger school, it will not count against their overall record when it comes to tournament play. So they can pick up two extra games. We, on the other hand, since we are an exclusion school, we cannot pick up two extra games. From the British Invasion, the Kinks. That was actually Van Halen. Van Halen's version. Mm-hmm. Of course, we only heard the first two words. One of my all-time favorite bands. I will always remember Van Halen for playing the guitar solo in Michael Jackson's Beat It. Yep. But never performing it live, only in the recorded version. Yeah, okay, you're right. And that's a trivia fact, by the way, folks. Oh, so come if you on. Win trivia. Yeah. Oh, wait. the sticks went up. The sticks went up. So if you're ever, ever asked in trivia what famous guitarist played the guitar solo in Michael Jackson's Beat It but never performed it live, it is Eddie Van Halen. And if you win any gift cards <laughs> or monetary prizes, Brockton High Athletics, located at 470 Forest Ave. Uh -huh. It can't be over $49.99. Uh, can't be over $49.99. <laughs> and if it is money, maybe you can purchase one of the very slick looking Brockton boxer hoodies or athletic wear. A buck 41 left in the third period. Brockton will call their timeout. 
That's something that I've seen more and more of popping up around town is the uh, the sweatshirts, the hoodies, yeah. the T-shirts, the boxer pride items. Mm -hmm. And the, and the thing that we wanted to do is we we make absolutely no money on the sweatshirts. It's just to get them, like you said, to show the school support and to have people go out and about. And I can't get over when I was out in Minneapolis last year. The jacket that I'm wearing today, guy comes up to me in Minneapolis and, hey, you from Brockton? I'm like, yeah. I'm the athletic director. And he goes, oh, my God. I remember in the 80s, the football team. I mean, so people recognize um, – you know, the, the city, the, the history, and um, we just want to have more kids wearing the gear. We make it affordable, and hopefully it's something that they like. And come spring, we'll do some more new designs and, and get more people in it. So I was talking to someone up in Lowell. The, uh, the movie The Fighter was filmed up in Lowell. Yep. Oh, what a great movie. At the West End Gym. Oh, God, up there. so good. And I was talking to uh, one of the people that I work with, and he said, oh, you know, I'm from Brock. And he said, isn't that where Rocky Marciano was from? So I had to pull out from Eddie Murphy's <laughs> Coming to America, the boxer discussion. <laughs> Every time I go to talk about boxing, someone's got to pull out Rocky Marciano. Of course, there's many more words in that, than oh. that but they're not kosher for uh, public access here. Good oh. keeping by Bridges. He tees one up, and it's over the top of the crossbar. Oh. And excellent opportunity out in front. The sticks go oh, up again. My goodness. Bodies everywhere. Mass carnage behind the lion net. Loose again, and oh, diving on it is Clem. Oh, my goodness. They couldn't sneak one in. A minute left, and look for Massaro to be standing somewhere around the hash marks. Well, if they put pressure on like that, I don't know if you have to pull him just yet because one bad bounce and a long shot. One led to the goal that put the Lions up by one. Yeah. Face off really important here. Oh, we have a timeout. Timeout, Lions with a minute and one second to go in the third period. I think the fighter is to lull what Rocky Marciano is oh, to the city of Brockton. But what a great movie that was. I forgot about that one. It was on uh, HBO or Showtime a couple of weeks ago. My roommate texted me. He's like, hey, I just saw a movie. I, I think I recognize the, the city. It looked a lot like downtown Lowell. I said, was it the fighter? And he says, yeah, it was. How'd you know? And I was like, that's all everybody talks yeah. about is the fighter. There's a phenomenal Greek restaurant right across the street oh. from my office, Athenian Corner. And I guess um, Ricky Gervais. Yep. That was his favorite spot. He ate there four really? times a week while they were really? filming. They got pictures of him on the wall. I'm dying to go to the place in Norwood that everybody keeps telling me about. There's a Lebanese restaurant. I forget what the name of it is, but anybody who's been that is Lebanese said it is so good. And I haven't had lunch today. And I'm a little Thanks bit on the us. hungry side. One minute left to play in the period. One minute. Thank you. <laughs> One minute to go in the third period. The box is down by one. They've had a lot of offensive oh, pressure the last two kidding. minutes. Massaro drifting out towards the faceoff oh. dots. Oh. A shot in. This one zings high. See, this is that's why you don't pull the goalie right here. <laughs> the Lions into the boxer zone. Backhanded dump is picked up by Al All Birmingham. Right, 30 seconds one last to go. Push. Too far for Ben oh. Martin, and it's an icing on the boxers, and that will further slow Massaro's charge to the bench with 24.1 seconds to go. Bridges, Birmingham, Sylvia, El Shami. And I believe another Sylvia on for the boxers. Here he comes. Massaro to the bench. He, he tags goes. up, gets back. 
into the boxer uh, crease. This uh, one up into the protective netting. Eight seconds to go. The face off of the boxer's defensive zone and that should pretty much do it. Yeah. It would have to be just like a perfect face off win. Fly it up the side, that's all I can think of. And no. Oh. A couple of extra ticks off yeah. the clock there. About half a second should be added back on. Brock right. winning the faceoff. And, and that's the Lions taking over. Retrieved on the near side by Jalen Bridges. The buzzer sounds. And I'm going to call this one an upset. Yeah. Well, I mean, I... I Couple bad breaks. That's really what it comes down to. That um, the two goals down here in the third period just unfortunate bounces, and it wasn't for lack of effort. I mean, they they had so many scoring chances they didn't give up. It was just a, it was a good hockey game. Dominic Massaro has been excellent in that. He yeah. probably had another 30, like 30 saves 30 today, saves, yeah. and the the pucks that went in were really a couple three of them were fluky bounces yeah. and one of them he was just fooled sliding across the crease the other way the good story for the boxers ben martin who ran into dominic massaro and was hurt came back and immediately scored a uh, goal on his next shift after that so he looks no worse for the wear Four to three, the final score. Mr. Carroll, yeah. your final thoughts on the boxers' well, effort today? Well, back to work. And uh, I know that uh, Chris is disappointed and the kids are disappointed, but you know what? They fought and uh, they responded being down three to one. So you got to have that as a, as a positive moving forward and just back to business next week. Pope John Paul getting the victory. Four to three, your final score over the Brockton boxers for everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partner. Kevin Caro, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.